first thing I saw, the beautiful country that Akon has been talking about. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to look everywhere, but just the few days we've spent here. Another thing I see is peace and calm. Mm. You know, when your country comes from war, everybody is a little jittery. And when you come to Morovia, you feel that that anxiety. But when you, we, we landed and got to the hotel about 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and everyone was tired, but I got up at 6, and when I opened the windows, I was like, oh, my God, how beautiful this is. And we've driven around a little bit. So I've seen the beauty. I've seen the in industry of your people. Everyone is engaged. Everyone is busy doing something. Unlike my country, there's a lot of idleness because you have uh, the new generation of young people who were actually born during the war. So they didn't have an opportunity for proper education and proper industry. All they saw growing up was handouts, free food, free blankets, you know, because they were in displaced camps all across our country. So some of them still don't know what it is to begin to work and do what you need. They expect mm. that everything will be given to them as handouts and given to them for free. Mm. And so we're having that problem of how to actually engage, engage them. So I thought coming to this part of the continent would give me uh, an experience on industry, building, working together, peace, which I've seen all of those. Um, we're hoping that it can be a little bit easier to come across from Liberia or West Africa to Uganda. I know there's a Ugandan air. We're hoping one day sooner than later they will have some trips to Monrovia, even if it's once a week. Your Excellency will really, really love that. Because mm -hmm. you go from Monrovia to Accra, from Accra to Nairobi, and then from Nairobi to Uganda. So it takes almost 24 hours to get from one short distance that could probably be five hours mm -hmm. in, in, in a trip. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that will help us better link people to people. Again, the African continent of free trade is about people working together to build a better, sustainable Africa. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make that as my first request, if it's possible to begin to think about it, mm -hmm. how maybe Ugandan air can begin to come to Liberia. I think it will open up a people to people, interlink commerce and trade Mm. faster than anything else mm. because there's so much we can learn from you we have so many opportunities we're hoping that our brothers from across the continent can come and help us rebuild from the resources that we have as Africans and help us to get on track with the African mm. revolution that I think is the next fight with all of you especially our fathers that have been a part of the liberation fight have given us liberty we now are free but we must get economic independence. And the mm -hmm. only way to do that is to build the industries with the resources that God has given us. I have written about all those issues for the last 60 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've, I've been, uh, before you were born, I was already. I know. <laughs> I, I was already involved. Now, you are Africans. There is a French word which I like very much. Buku dormil, sleeping a lot. So you are Ugandans here, are, are, are big sleepers. So the, the few things you see, we have been struggling to wake them up. Because uh, as you receive from my speeches, The main problem of Africa was it is really social backwardness. When the society is still, society is always moving forward. And about 600 years ago, Europe, which was also like us, but they started shifting from muscle power, using the muscle, the hole, the axe, or sometimes using the, the animal, animal power, animal muscle, 
they started shifting from about 1440 when the first German invented a printing press. Because before that, everybody was using muscle, 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 human. But from that time, the Europeans started using machine. Uh, and by 16 something, they, they had invented the steam engine, which was initially for pumping water. Then by 1800, they were using the steam to drive the train. So that's what the Europeans called the first industrial revolution. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. The use of, of machines and steam power. Uh, and now, then they went to the second one, electricity, second revolution. Uh, then they went to the third one, automation. They are now entering the fourth one, artificial intelligence. So meanwhile, you are Africans, including these ones here. They are asleep, still using muscle. So that technological gap is the big problem for your people, our people here. Now the big structural problem of society was they knew how to work for food. The Ugandans, they knew how to work for food, uh, culturally. They, 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 we don't import food. They grow the food since time immemorial. So this has been our, our battle, Be fighting with them. Please, don't only produce food, produce food and cash, cash. So now, recently, I hear that the, 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 the households, which are still working only for the stomach, are now only 39%. So 61% now have learned to work for the stomach, but also the pocket. That's uh -huh. good news. Uh -huh. That's what I, I, I read recently. But 20, 2014, there was still 68. We are still working only for... So it has been a big war, a big struggle. Uh, but it is, it is doable. It can be done. If you, you need to be clear yourselves, you the leaders. The leaders must be clear in Guinea Conakry. But what I know about Liberia, apart from rubber, you also have iron ore. So you should really be the one to supply the whole of Africa. So you, you, you tell the, your, the president that please work, see what can be done to build. Because I hear that they export just iron ore and process. That's what somebody told me. Yes, we just export iron ore and rubber. But iron ore, they are cheating you. You see the... They are. When you export... They hear, these fellows wanted to export. <laughs> I stopped them. This one had made a, a deal with the Indians. <laughs> Not this particular one, but people like him, some of his, his colleagues. They had made an agreement with the Indians to export iron ore. I came to know later. I said no. That man is an educated man. But they didn't know arithmetic. Because the Indians were going to pay them $47 per, ta per, per ton. Per ton. Mm -hmm. And then they take the iron ore to India. They turn it into steel. Our, our iron ore here is very good. It is 70% pure. So when you, you take a ton, you get 700 K. 
kilograms out of a ton of iron ore. But they were, they, they were going to pay them $47 per ton. And when they, they transform it, for them they get $550. The Indians, they get $550. They give this man $47. I said over my dead body, this will not happen when I'm here. I stopped it. But it's not just the money. It is the jobs. Because when the iron ore goes to India, the people who will be working in the factory have jobs. Will not be the um, uh, 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 American Liberian. What, what do you call them in, in Liberia? American Liberians are. <laughs> It, it, it will not be the American Liberians working in the factory. It will be the Indians. Yes, sir. So you are exporting money. You are donating. So I said you are donors. You are donating money, but also donating jobs. Jobs. So Liberia to export iron ore is, uh, is, is, is not correct. Something must be done to, uh, and you are near the coast, so you, you can process and it's, the export is very easy because you, you, you are near the, the ocean. The only thing I don't know is where you would get uh, a coal, because you need coal to remove oxygen from, from iron. But you can import it, you can import it from uh, those who produce coal, or you can even use hydrogen. These days, people are talking of using hydrogen to mm. to, to remove the the. the, the, the. So uh, I don't know the other minerals of, of Liberia. It is it is rubber and and iron ore. So you can have a whole. This is what I'm fighting with these people. I am in, in war with these people. We are at war because they want to sleep. I want them to, to wake up. <laughs> And they say I'm disturbing them, that I should leave them alone to sleep. 